Now I want to deal with the most important position of endgame theory from a practical point of view. It is one of the main reasons why uh, the endgame rook and pawn versus rook has such a drawing tendency as the defending king is reasonably placed. And in a way, in some way, it also has to do with the general drawing tendency of rook and games, of course. You should know it by heart, as it can be applied with um, bishop's pawn, like in this example, or with a uh, knight's pawn or a central pawn, or of course also with rook's pawn. Well, the winning chances with the rook's pawn are, of course, uh, even worse than with the other pawns, of course. Uh, Black to move can establish Philidus drawing mechanism, which you should know. Black must play rook b6 to cut off white's king on the sixth rank. White has no real shield from the checks, and usually transitions to pawn and games are all drawn. For instance, rook h7 can here, and the pawn and game, of course, is completely drawn as. In this position, you retreat to, remember from the first DVD, of course you retreat to F8. So this is no real winning try, and the only other way to make progress would be to advance the F pawn, but then White's king, yeah, or if, if you just wait, uh, if you mark time, then Black also just waits. Um, and the only other way to make progress would be f6, to use the f pawn as shield. But now white's king has no protection against the checks from behind. So rook b1 and yeah, white's king has no shelter. And again, this pawn endgame would be completely drawn off course. And again, you retreat to f8. And in this case, there is simply no shelter from the checks. Okay, with Y to move, on the other hand, this given position would be one as it is a bishop's pawn. And white can encircle black and must start with king g6. Of course, king f6 would be a stupid blunder, forcing black to establish Philidor's defensive set up. And yeah, no fourth of the world can break this. And after f6 you play, you remember? Of course. And White's king has no shield, this is the main point of Philidor's defensive mechanism. Um, and... Um, Instead of king g6, f6 would also be a big mistake. Again, black draws easily as there's no shelter. So, the only real chance, you can also find this by this method of exclusion, but you could of course also find it by searching for checks for the king, uh, shelters for the king from checks. Now, black's king cannot leave the 8th rank. Uh, Bla Black's rook cannot leave the 8th rank, as after rook b1, the f pawn would uh, queen. Check, 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 and the f pawn would cost Black's rook, as White's king would just approach the, oh, excuse me, would just approach the checking rook, and then the rook would be forced to sacrifice itself. So, Black's Rook cannot leave the 8th rank, and this passive defense leaves this with a bishop's or central pawn. It only works with a knight's or a rook's a pawn, as we'll see in, the, in one of the next clips. Okay. So, King G6, and invading passively loses F6. Now, Black must stay passive forever. And this is usually a very bad sign in, in Rook Endgames. Activity is of paramount importance in Rook Endgames. Sometimes it is even possible to sacrifice a pawn to activate a ro the Rook or a King. We will see several examples of this in, uh, on this um, DVD. Okay. Yeah, and now Rook is G7 check. 
Yeah, the immediate uh, rook h7, the immediate try to encircle would not be precise due to the strong defensive counter rook, g, rook c6, threatening to take on f6. And now white must go back, forcing black again into the passive position. And then white would win, as I will show you now. Check. King h8. Just check. Check and circling and winning the rook. And um, king f8, then rook h7, and again winning by the same method. You should know Philidus defensive um, setup, which arises, for example, here. A by heart. Remember this setup. Uh, play it against Fritz or friends at the chess club. And uh, really remember it. It will be worth it. It is the most important single position of endgame theory from a practical point of view. And it's not so difficult to remember. If you once have stored it inside your memory, you will never forget it for your whole life.